What's up, everyone? Welcome to Simulation. We are currently on site in Topanga Canyon visiting Bernard Gunther. Hello. Hello, Alan. Thank you for coming on the show again. Thanks for coming for a visit. Excellent. It, it's been such a pleasure being here at your home and speaking with you in this of course, you pick an incredibly beautiful part of the Los Angeles area to live in uh, that's completely separated from the craziness of the city, the metropolitan city. Um, so Bernard is, uh, as you guys know, the founder of Piercing the Veil of Reality. We've had him on the show before. We are going to be unpacking uh, some more of the nuance and some more of the content, these beautiful bird chirps that are happening right now. I love it. Um, so Bernard has a webinar that's coming up for everyone that's interested. We have the link in the bio um, and Bernard's going to be unpacking so many important concepts there. And let's just, let's walk through some of, uh, some of, some of the stuff that we've been talking about that we think is just really important to voice to more people. Um, the, the idea of self work and being on this path to awakening is something that you write about and talk about a lot includes things like the artistic expressions, um, integrating wounding, aligning with this higher force. So, um, yes, so tell us, tell us about that. Well, the best place to start from is really looking at what's going on in the world right now. It has been going on for a while. We see these are crazy times, you know, a lot of pol polarization, people fighting each other, people attached to certain ideologies, beliefs, political systems, and everybody thinks their belief or system is the best, and they're trying to convince the other person intellectually, right, about all these things, right? And we all, everybody's coming from well-meaning place. Everybody, you know, has, you know, most people anyway, have their heart in the right place, so to speak. Um, but if you kind of look deeper into it all, you know, there's only so much can change by externally trying to change the world or another person. And most often we cannot reach people by intellectual discourse alone. You know, you can plant some seeds here and there and make people curious. But most often all these, especially nowadays, intellectual debates that are very popular this day and age, and which I enjoy myself, but sometimes it just boils down to intellectual masturbation. Um, <coughs> no offense. But there's a deeper component missing. and. Really, it ties into what uh, Gandhi said, you know, be the change you want to see in the world, yes. which that saying has actually also been distorted because, you know, <clears throat> what change do you want to see? So then people, again, impose their own ideologies and systems and, and how things should be, right? Um, but the main ingredient is really missing is what you just alluded to is the deeper inner sincere self-work, to really understand yourself, like the ultimate question, who am I, to gain true self-knowledge. Because all of us, without exceptions, until unless someone is enlightened, <laughs> I'm not enlightened, um, you know, we all have our own programming, our own blind spots, our own conditioning, you know, on various levels, just on, on the basic uh, social level or cultural level the way we grew up, our educational system, which is most of this just an indoctrination with certain beliefs, ideas that don't really, you know, uh, align with truth or reality. I mean, look at the, one of the basic conditioning is, you know, when you receive, you know, birth certificate and birth date, uh, birth um, yeah, certificate and passport, and right away you claim, oh, I'm an American. Because I was born, he born here, you identify with this country, with the government, with the flag, with the nation. And there's really a conditioning and it's actually an artificial abstract concept to identify with, with uh, you know, these imaginary borders. And that already creates separation through other people who identified, conditioned with other nations, isms, political systems, flags and whatnot. Right. <clears throat> so, you know, but deep down inside, it comes to the question, who are we truly? In the end, and we are human beings. But we have certain identifications with beliefs and ideas through our upbringing. And then through our upbringing, some people identify with the liberal left side, progressive, democratic side. And then you have the other side of the spectrum, the Republican right or whatever, conservative. Uh, but it's like both, uh, you know, uh, uh, it ties into the trap of identification in a sense, right? And then people trying to get rid of the other side <laughs> or convince the other side, right? Uh, but it's a, it's a closed loop because it's in a sense a trap of this duality, so to speak. So going beyond that, you know, to truly um, 
have a better world or want to see change, we need to change deeply within ourselves. And before we can change, not just on action behaviors, we need to dive deep and dig within us. And when we do this sincerely, we come across all kinds of um, conflicting emotions, desires, very disturbing feelings, negative feelings and stuff we don't really look, look, want to look at. Like stuff we just like, uh, just feels bad, right? And then we suppress it, we put it back in the unconscious, which Carl Jung called the shadow, mm -hmm. right? It gets suppressed, suppressed, suppressed. And then we project it outward on, on other people, right? With emotional, you know, shadow projections, hate, anger, disgust, everything that irritates us about another person we get offended by, right? You know, alludes to actually what we have suppressed, our own unconscious shadow. So this needs to become to light to become a whole person on that basic psychological level, right? And that includes childhood wounding. No, we all have our issues. No one is perfect, right? N neither our parents were not p perfect as well. So you cannot blame your parents because intergenerational wounding and programming and all of that. But we're all dealing with these emotions and feelings which we have suppressed and, and haven't allowed us to feel. And then we jump or escape into the head. And that's what's really happening, especially in this modern world. We live a very head-centric existence, where the intellect, the IQ is worshipped. Information, you see it in school, right, with the grading system and information and more. But, you know, we're not being taught anything about emotional intelligence in school, not, nothing about trusting your intuition and diving deeper from there, right? And so what we experience collectively is also the body-mind split. Like, we become desensitized from the body. The body holds an amazing intelligence, incredible intelligence and awareness. It gives us constantly signals and signs what is good for us and what is not good for us. That intuitive response, which is unique to everyone, it's different, right? And the trap I see nowadays as well is what I call the disease of homogenization, trying to make everyone the same, right? Which ties into actually the underlying dogma of socialism, right? Where everybody should do the same thing, all these should, should, shoulds, and assuming that everybody is the same, what works for one may work for everyone, which is not true at all. We are unique individuals, and what we're losing is our individuality. And I mean true individuality in the sense of like who we truly are on a spiritual soul level, a unique expression of, of the divine, of something higher. I'm not talking about individuality in, in terms of cultural um, you know, perception of, of a cult of personality which most often is a very narcissistic personality, which people have as, as role models nowadays, which we see as celebrities or the Kardashian kind of, mm -hmm. you know, um, phenomenon, you know, where people become famous just for being famous <laughs> and all these things. But there's a deeper individual, a true soul essence, right? Our true source within our fulfillment, but also uh, connects us to our true soul purpose, what we're here to do on an individual level, yes. our vocation, our calling, which is more than just a career and job, yes. right? And the more we align with that through this inner work and, you know, get, you know, heal or get rid of anything that is in obstruction in the way, our conditioning, programming, wounding, the more we become in alignment with this higher force, with our true self, so to speak. And then we receive an internal guidance, right? Yes. And then life becomes actually more effortless, in a sense. And then we create more harmony. That's the true meaning of, of reality creation. The more we're in harmony within ourselves, with nature and spirit, uh, the more it is reflected in the outside world, right? But we live in the modern world also, again, in a civilization that's completely removed from nature and spirit, yeah. right? And essentially our true embodied self. So, again, being round circle, it is about this inner work, which is several aspects. It's a self-work as aspect on the basic psychological level. Like I said, young in uh, psychology, for example, like shadow work, all of that. Basic childhood wounding work, right? Anything wounds, trauma, we have experienced abuse from just, you know, growing up or just living in the society where pathology has become normalized, right? There's this famous quote from Krishnamurti, it's no measure of health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society. And that's what we're trying to do. A lot of people, they're trying to adjust to a society that is completely out of tune with nature and spirit, that is pathological. And a lot of people have desires, wants, and needs. They take as their own, but they're not their own. They're deeply conditioned from entertainment, culture, or whatever. They tell us what brings us happiness, money, career. The more you have of that, the more happy you will. But it's, it's, it's a bottomless hole, right? It won't bring you true happiness. And then 
people pursue this and then they get depressed and depression in that sense is actually not a physical or mental illness it's the cry from the soul to adjust mm. right to go deep within and find something else to question the world as well you know once you do this in a deep inner process it also you will start to see the world differently you start to question what we've been told and told so it's a twofold process it's the inner and the outer work right seeking truth you know within and without so to speak yeah. and on that note i'm not demonizing the intellect yeah. right it has its place we need to learn to uh, how to use the mind basic critical thinking yes, yes. basic logic absolutely right but it has its limitations yeah. right there's something deeper that goes beyond the five senses beyond the intellect you know which ties in, into deeper esoteric self work right spiritual work embodiment process soul evolution soul individualization right uh, reaching a high level of being of, of consciousness right which the intellect the mind cannot grasp and is actually hindrance in it so to speak but the the key is again going into the body to become truly whole also to uh, unite the inner male and female right the male aspect is the head centric living the analytical the feminine aspect is deep in the body in the gut you know that's connected to all that is that sees the interrelationship of it all mm -hmm. the mind likes to fragmentize analyze right Sep separate everything it's never perceiving wholeness but in the sense everything the irony everything what is here and is happening in the world has its right to be here and exist there's nothing wrong with reality there's no mistake mm -hmm. everything has its teaching function mm -hmm. right and everything plays itself out in this what we experience right now this duality we're in right now right so it is you know that's in a nutshell this this um this process we you know whoever anyone who is called to do this to really engage more in this inner work and obviously before you can do that you also need to understand educate yourself how to do self-work what does it imply which implies having gaining a basic understanding of of psychological work somatic work the body-mind connection and then understanding esoteric work spiritual work meditative practices body-mind practices all of that right to get out of here because what i've noticed the more people live up in the head head-centric existence the more they look for answers out there for somebody to tell them what to do mm -hmm. And that's actually the original rise of authoritarianism, to follow somebody, to somebody save the world, mm -hmm. because they have lost their connection from within, right? The more you have lost your own connection, the more you, you know, believe in the illusion of government and wanting a leader and somebody save them, all right, the savior program, yeah. right? And it's all by design, from a matrix perspective, to um, not only disempower us, but vector us away from our own guidance, from our true soul, deeper purpose. Right, so let's, un let's unpack this. Yeah. So, <clears throat> your nuance there about self work is just that is why we're here sitting with you today. It's just breaking it down in some of the most just important highlights possible. Um, we're, we're on this path to an awakening and there is a lot of cultural programming that comes into place to, like you were saying, vector us off of this path. There is also this really heavy process of looking at ourselves in the mirror and being able to really help ourselves objectively see what we want to change and how we want to become better, how we want to guide ourselves towards that awakening that we want to have. And then uh, I, I think it's really important, you know, as you were unpacking all of this, you started talking about these vectors um, and even maybe just even before we get there, this really relatable way that you were um, teaching me about, <clears throat> excuse me, about artistic expression. So doing simple things like both of us right now. We're neither one of us is wearing shoes right now. We're both absorbing sunlight right now. We were we were making some funny like artistic expressions with like just making music with our mouths earlier. Just this idea that you can find you were talking about body work as well that this sort of these sort of easy things that are so simple and grounding can help guide us towards that self work maximizing the success of it. Um, other things like integrating the wounding and aligning ourselves with this path. Now, 
maybe we talk a bit about this vectoring. So we're, we're on this path and then there's these sort of vectors that may come up. And one of them that you recently wrote about that I think we both found very interesting was the one about um, this inclination towards objectification of women. And that is something that we see so much with men occurring in the world. And, you know, if you see a very attractive woman, the first thing that you know, really came to mind is, oh my gosh, how attractive, how physically attractive. Um, my gosh, sex, sex, sex. But then the ability to really grab that and say, hold on, I'm not objectifying. What is going on in this person's soul? What is going on in their heart? Let me practice that motion more and more. So it's maybe teach us a bit about these vectors, um, how they can, of course, also <laughs> we're in Topanga. <laughs> Actually, we're so in Topanga. I had this little acorn fall on me earlier from from the tree. It was so great, just having it drop right in my lap. Um, so, and the vectors, of course, extend to so many other things in culture. So, yes, please teach us about the vectors. Okay, so yeah, you mentioned several things. Yeah, beyond like what do you mean in grounding, like s simple aspects of just also connecting more to nature as we are, right? You know, speaking of a ground like earth thing, like literally walking barefoot in the earth, getting sunshine. There's a whole matrix program that teaches fear of the sun, which is completely based on lies. The sun has so many health benefits and so many levels on an energetic level. There's proven physical uh, benefits of strengthening the immune system, the bones, but also the aura on energetic level. And it just keeps you alive and healthy. It's the life force, <laughs> literally, yeah. right? So. Doesn't that like just spending more time in nature literally helps with that process to get out of the cities, to get out of our mind, right? To jump into the ocean, right? And cleanse yourself and all the things. And essentially, it's one on that note, it, it's not about also confronting our inner wounded child, but also the joy of the inner child, which we have forgotten. We've become such serious adults. You know, even my work is serious and people see, you know, can see it, but. You know, some people think I'm, I'm a very serious person. I take my work seriously, but I don't take myself serious, <laughs> right? I play, I, I dance, I love dancing, right? I make music, um, I like drumming and, and, and all these things. I, um, <clears throat> when I jump into the water, the ocean, I giggle like a little child because it reminds me of my childhood. Water has such as this effect to me. And this joy of the inner child, right? There's, it also kind of, that's kind of... That's also programmed out of out of us absolutely it's uh, especially for men boys don't cry or grow up you know yeah. be an adult and i'm not saying that we should be childish right in the sense and uh, avoid responsibility that's not what i'm talking about but it's you know that actually getting in touch with our true the joy of an inner child which has become so suppressed in so many ways and armored and buffered up is also the gateway to our actually individual purpose in the sense the vocation, because remember, when you're, in a, when you're a child, there's, I'm sure you can look at certain things you always did, and you just love doing it with your whole passion and your whole, your, any, anything, your whole being was into it. And there were two things. You didn't care about the outcome. There have no expectations of success, right, yeah. of making money out of it, yeah. in a sense. And also, you didn't care what anybody else was thinking about you, yes. right? Yes. And I'm not saying that this particular thing is your thing, but that state, you know, Whatever grabs you, it's what Joseph Campbell called following your bliss. That's the, your vocation. That's kind of like that thing that gives you so much power and excitement. That's the, that's the hint to your deeper soul purpose. And it's not driven by ambition. It's not driven by expectations. It's not driven by status and what other people may think of you. It doesn't imply that you shouldn't make a living out of it or receiving money for it is bad or evil, that money is evil. It's just coming from this deeper... Uh, sense of being with integrity right and then the universe will respond ac accordingly and then you're truly living your vocation rather than having just a career or job yes. but before you know some people find it earlier than others right but for that some most often it is um hidden behind all these layers of insecurities woundings you know conditioning programming and all of that but you know like i just wanted to acknowledge that that there are simple ways we can do, right, to dis to get out of our heads and disconnect to nature and our true selves. But you know, if we don't, you know, if we don't aspire to that, then we get, as you mentioned, vectored, vectored away. You know, uh, we through talk, we talk about meaning so much, uh, and if we're talking about meaning, you make this clear statement about having more. Uh, 
these hints, these hints yeah. towards our meaning, and then the vectors away from it. Exactly, these hints, and they come like spirit, nature, the divine, whatever you may want to call it. I'm not talking about a dogmatic religious God out there, you know, and this, you know, the life source, creator of creation, whatever. It is talking to us, to you all the time. It's giving you signals and symbols. It tells you, gives you messages. But you cannot perceive it as long as you're up here in your like box of like, I have to do this and should do this. And all around the messages are there. It can be symbolism, synchronicities, a little hint, a little inspired intuition. But we don't, if we have forgotten to trust our intuition or we don't trust our intuition because we've never taught to trust our intuition. And it's scary to trust that intuition. Intuition is, is this embodied knowing. It's, it goes more than a feeling. It, it gives you this really embodied mm-hmm or mm-hmm, this deep embodied yes or no. But it doesn't give you a reason. And we are so used when we make decisions out of our head, it's like I should do this because A, B, C, D, pro and con and like, and then make this rational, you know. And again, I'm not demonizing that, right? We need the yeah. planning, practical application. But I, the head is actually the worst place to make decisions from, right? It's more trust in this, this deep embodied body felt sense so to speak knows what is good for us and when you look at life life is all about making decisions every single day yeah, yeah. the moment you get up in the morning to you make decisions from big to small what to eat what to wear yeah. up to like what relationship to engage in what job to have go and take a trip yes no go to this store anything yeah. right and most often it's so mechanical and so conditioned it's not only it's like i mentioned before not even our, our true self that is driving it but it's the conditioned fake personality right that false self so the more we learn to trust within getting into body and trust that intuition then we are more in alignment and the less we get vectored away uh, or vectored off by matrix temptation you know what i call especially in culture which is the three big ones it's uh money sex and power right <clears throat> and again it's it's nothing wrong about money there's nothing wrong about sex and there's nothing wrong about power per se mm -hmm. <laughs> right you know money is like agreed upon ex exchange we have it's energy mm -hmm. right but if if you just make things just for the sake of money right if that's your main then the matrix has you so to speak and it will never give you true fulfillment you know same with uh, with power you maybe have a power recognition status right people to look look at me and like feed off of you the attention you get but true power is internal yeah. it's connected to your true divine source where you're so deeply fulfilled within that nothing can shake you from the outside you don't depend on the outside you don't depend on anyone for your well-being and and fulfillment and self-worth mm -hmm. right and sex well that's <laughs> That's a whole topic on its own, what you just mentioned. I mean, the sexual, the distortion of sexual energy is, is one of the underlying matrix um, uh, mechanisms, so to speak, you know, to keep us in this lower animalistic nature, yeah. right, um, of sexual luge. And, you know, a lot of, you know, Gurdjieff said something profound in, his, um, in the book uh, his student, Peter Ospensky, wrote In Search of the Miraculous. There's a section about the abuse of sex. But the abuse of sex is not necessarily all the sexual pathologies that are out there in this day and age, which you know, but many of them have become normalized. But the abuse of sex and uh, the quote-unquote wrong use of the, distorted use of the sexual center, right? When you feed off of just sexual energy, like a lot of people, they go out to parties, even shopping or whatever, and dress up, you know, most women and mostly women but men alike, just to get a reaction to feel like you know to be sexually um you know to be admired or like to kind of like yeah. feed off of their attention yeah. you know yeah. on that note it's very interesting we talk about this because just two days ago i had a session with like my healer and and and, and teach i go to sometimes because i need feedback and healing work yeah. uh the long session she did amazing and you know energy work on me and i was in this really uh, grounded highly aware state Right, and I fasted all day, so she lives down in West LA. So I stepped on the way back. I went to Santa Monica, Third Street Promenade, you know, that open air uh, mall, so to speak. And um, so I was walking around the state and it was really fascinating. And I was really like observing people and trying to make eye contact, which didn't happen. Everybody's in their own world, reality. And, and I had this sense, really, this deep embodied experience how mechanical people are. Like there's no free will, it's, there are programs running around. And I didn't have any sense of superiority. Mm 
yeah. right? Or so it was complete compassion. I was just wow. It was just this deep experience, yes. right? And then I saw also like at this. That's a huge key. There's not a sense of superiority. It's just a, um, a a sense of equality, but also just of perceiving things in this lens, through this lens. Exactly, just to see what what as it is. Like there was no thought. Like there was no ju- I didn't. There was no judgment whatsoever. Just experiencing that, mm-hmm. and it's more energetic level, like, like seeing through the appearances, seeing wounded people, mechanical people, yeah. right? And the, the unintegrations of of their childhood traumas, or maybe the attachments to the appearance and to the need for that sexual energy, or to the um, attachments to other things, like you were describing with the money and the greed. These things that you, that if what would it look like for all of those people that you were walking by to be aligned perfectly with their soul path and not be vectored off? Yeah, probably the shopping mall would be empty. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but what I've noticed in terms of sexual energy, a lot of guys too, but mostly women, the way they dressed up and the makeup just to go shopping to really like, and the sexual energy, this luge was coming out of them just to get that attention. And it was very consciously and unconscious. And I'm, again, there's no judgment, right? But it like, I didn't feel attracted, like, because I, because I was like, not in my lower self. I was really from this higher embodied perspective. Right? But most often we live in this lower nature, animalistic being, you know, of, of fight and flight, fucking and eating, basically, yeah. you know, what most be like unconsciously, you know, are driven by, so to yeah. speak. And, um, you know, but again, there was no judgment to see what it is, but I see this so much in our world, like again, with, which especially nowadays, our women are subjected to what you mentioned, the objectification, right? Especially in this day and age with the internet, the the impossible body image, porn and all of that, you know, and uh, man feed into that as well. So everybody is, there's, it's not about gender, in, you know, in general, but it's everybody's wounded, so to speak, right? So there needs to be a lot of healing then. And it's also, I'm not demonizing sexuality or beauty, you know, it's okay to appreciate physical beauty, to take care of yourself yeah. on the physical level, absolutely, yeah. right? That's, that's, you know, if you want to, pump yourself up, wear nice clothes, make some makeup, you know, that go for it, right? Enjoy yourself, right? But what is the true intention behind it again, right? What are you trying to achieve? You know, what are you trying to get out of it, right? So it is about essentially true self-love, but not the narcissistic kind of self-love where you uh, um, get addicted to the compliments of other people. And then you have the whole selfie generation and narcissism, social media, and yeah. people getting addicted to the dopamine hits of all the likes they're getting of, of their selfies and all of that. Yeah. Right? That's not self-love, that narcissism. Right? That's, a, that's an epidemic, literally, where that, that has become normalized as well because of what I mentioned before, of role models in our official culture yeah. <laughs> who are full of narcissists. Right? So wh- what, would you, what would you say for the... Um for the truth seekers that are that are on the soul path that are that at least are aware of the soul path that see the vectors coming in that are trying to ship them off the soul path the the control matrix what what are you know you were listing at the very beginning these ways of looking at ourselves in the mirror integrating our trauma all these different things what is kind of the you know the coalescing thought around that um you mean with the guts to how to do it yeah, and how to integrate that as part of right. yeah well first of understanding it's a process yes. right and uh you know it ties into the process of awakening right essentially and uh you know the true awakened state we're talking about enlightenment <laughs> so that's far away from all you know it's right here but far away at the same time again i'm not awakened fully awakened the true meaning of the word right there's different levels and stages it's a process to become more and more objective with ourselves and more objective with the world true objective we cannot be fully objective right we all have subjective blind spots but the enlightened state is really like when the observer become the observed and the as to see the universe as it sees itself you know and like it's hard to put into words in the mind because it's like you don't want to mistake the, as a Zen saying goes, the finger pointing at the moon for the moon, right? Or the Tao that can be named is not the Tao. So language has its limitations here, obviously. Yeah. But it's a process. It trust starts with basic self-observation. And the big part of it is to, to establish um, 
the observer, <clears throat> the objective observer, the witness within. That's the foundation to start from in, in terms of self-work through meditative self-observation to be able to not dissociate out of your head but to be able to look at yourself from the outside and see how you act, how you feel, what, and you see how all these conflicting emotions, how mechanical it is really, right? And what is truly driving it and with what you, why, you know what I mean? Like you said before, when you see a beautiful woman, sometimes the men have the neck thing, whoa, whoa, right? And you see like most men or people don't question that they act on it and it's mostly just this like just the sexual desire that is aroused this lower that has its actually biological function to mate right in a sense right but it has become over sexualized right and all of that but if you like you mentioned observe yourself like okay that's interesting like you don't necessarily act on it you understand this is a very mechanical biological impulse in that sense that has been abused by the matrix advertising uses a lot sex cells we know it, right, because it makes you feel better. You, you, you specifically reference this as basic uh, self-work, this basic self uh, looking at yourself in the mirror. And I, and I think that is right spot on, um, this practice of this feedback loop of observing oneself objectively and working on oneself towards their higher calling. Um, all these vectors, I'm, I'm really excited for you to for you to share the webinar um, and one one last thing I think is really important for us to talk about right now um, you and I had this conversation uh, earlier and we find it to be quite in, it's quite disheartening it, it, it's a it's actually a little bit frustrating we see a lot of leading figures um, that are that have that are getting so much praise in their pursuits we see you know elon musk in many ways neil degrasse tyson in other ways and jordan peterson in different ways and so we were just talking about these figures and just how unfortunately none of them can for some reason attack the control matrix that none of them can badmouth the control matrix because then their following would question them unpack that for us because we want to rebirth the public intellectual we want to make it easy for for people to to be able to talk about at, at whatever scale whatever they want especially critiquing the control matrix and transcending it and helping people unleash their souls how how can we make that happen yeah well first of all regarding the individuals you mentioned that i see them in very different quote-unquote categories yes. without judging them like you know I, you know neil degrasse tyson it's for me like a gatekeeper to keep for keep the social of scientism so to speak right made some science and like you know has some great things to say but there's some scientific dogma so to speak right and i don't want to there's no need to get into debate into him alan mask you know we talked about it as you know, the technocrat savior that he's hailed as. There's some issues, and I wrote an article about it with transhumanism and AI and what he kind of promotes falls into the Hegel Hegelian dialect of problem, reaction, solution. There's an article on my website. People can talk, uh, check out transhumanism, the trap of consciousness. Jordan Peterson is in a different category. I feel he has its play. He has his plays and plays in a very important role. Right, it's interesting he got so popular, and he has some great many things to say to counteract the really the pathological left, yeah, right? Yes. And right away he's branded as a right wing and what, like the same me when I criticize liberals, whatever. I'm right where called a Trump supporter when I couldn't care less about either side because I'm not a statist. I don't believe in government, nations, and all of that or political affiliations whatsoever. Right, but even like if, with John Peterson, it's interesting he became extremely popular, right? But the more popular you become the less and less you will be able truly to stay in integrity and really seek truth and speak out about topics that may be even more taboo than what he's already talking about. Yeah. Because he would get an immense attack and be destroyed, mm. right? And I'm also not sure how he's actually aware of, of these deeper levels. And I'm not saying that I know it all and I'm all fully aware, you know, I have my own, it's my process. But I just know in my work I spe speak out about topics that would definitely rise an eyebrow, to say the least, if it would be more on the, on the mainstream level, yeah. right? And I would, that's why my work is not for everyone. It won't reach the mainstream. And if it would be, like I tell my friends, like out of jokingly, if I ever end up on Oprah, like, you know, give me real, something is off. I have failed. <laughs> 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 right? So, um, but, you know, that's how the matrix keeps itself in control. Right, look at 
the big lies still, you know, even by basic logic, basic critical thinking, the official story doesn't hold up. But over 17 years, it's still up. And if you're in a, uh, in a position of high public exposure and popularity would question that, you get shut down, right? You know, like... So what else is in that can of worms? It's a can of worms. If Jordan Peterson or like even Elon Musk or whoever these individuals or any of these more popular intellectuals would start questioning these things yeah. they would get a lot of attacks and be shut down and all the you know, would, you know. Um, so it is uh, you know that's why i'm always you know once you reach a certain level of of, of attention right there's like the matrix kind of wraps down more on me on yourself so to speak right so then maybe it's up to us to then drive these questions to them individually like for Neil deGrasse Tyson, is there too much of an obsession with scientism that there's not enough of an openness to spirituality with you? Or maybe with Elon Musk, it's about the ability to talk about the really, really difficult conversation about AI and transhumanism and how we still have a long way to go for us to understand ourselves. And then the merging with machines is a very insanely crazy thing that needs to be unpacked much more before we advance technology just to get there, just to do it. And and then maybe with Jordan, it's what are those other taboo areas that you just can't talk about? Like, why can't we open up more of society to be able to talk about those things? Well, a lot of these topics is like, they are occult topics, hidden topics. Occult simply means hidden, hidden. right? And by the nature of it, you know, it, it requires a certain level of being and awareness and embodiment beyond intellectual, you know, mastery. Yeah to understand them, to perceive them. So you cannot just convince people intellectually about certain topics. You know, there was always discussion, like the latest was, I think, Jordan Peterson versus Sam Harris. And it's like, I was listening to it and it's it's fun to watch. But again, it's for me, it's like ma intellectual masturbation. It's a waste of time, right? Because it's like, I don't, I don't want to convince people that there's something else, a higher force, a divine force acting like, which has nothing with the religious God. It's a, it's a deeper, you know, experience, right? You cannot convince people by argument. It's a waste of time, right? And the simple things that we were describing at the beginning with the being in the sunlight, doing body work, music, dance, artistic expression, those types of things get you closer to that feeling. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Especially, you know, you get more in the zone, you go on and, you know, session when you do truly in artistic expression, whatever, life is art in the sense. But it's about being in the zone. You understand from a higher perspective that you're a transducer for a higher force, for the divine, and you're just a vessel. Under the illusion of separation, you're identified with this ego personality, which is not who you truly are. You know, and no, you, these, I'm talking about it now, giving intellectual concepts, and uh, but this is an inner experience. And that's only result can be experienced when you engage in this, what I mentioned before, inner work, that esoteric work, the great work of the alchemists, what it's called about, right? The, developing yoga consciousness, which is, yoga goes way beyond just doing the asana practice, right? It's, it's, it's yoga means literally union with the divine, yeah. right? And see it through all the esoteric teachings, but the problem is again, being stuck in the head, right? There's emotional intelligence missing, there's more deeper sensitivity missing, there's, this head-centric existence, right? So I'm all for intellectual discourse, and it's great what's happening there on that level. I enjoy it, but it's 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 limited and it's a trap in itself. People definitely need to understand. Again, I mentioned before, have basic critical thinking, right? Which especially left needs seems to be completely missing. We talked about this before: the straw man <laughs> arguments, uh, all kinds of logical fallacies, which need to be understood, right? And 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 being able to talk about things without getting taking things personal, uh, engaging at, at hominem personal attacks and all of that, or being offended and all this nonsense, right? But this is just a step, right? There's something else, something deeper. And like, you cannot, people have to waken up, or will waken up in their own terms. You cannot force other people to wake up. Yeah. You know, I, nobody forced me, nobody tried to talk me into it. And one, once- You paid attention to the nuance of life. The nuance of life, and I mentioned this maybe before, uh, uh, suffering. I suffered deeply. That was my trigger, my catalyst. I didn't fit in, you know, I was unhappy, I was depressed, despair, dealing with suicide. That started, that uh, created the call within me. Who am I? What is this world? What's going on? Yeah. That was, yeah. was the seed, right? I have a lot of that too. So, that. And, and a lot of people do suffer, but they don't know that they suffer. 
but they have buffered up with armor, with addictions, with dis external distractions, entertainment, internet, sex addiction, shopping. You know, it's not only drugs and alcohol. Yes. So we just, you know, avoid our own disillusionment. And it's so unfortunate that those buffers are not being torn down by the leading intellectuals and and uh, spiritual people and uh, t t personalities, uh, athletes and artists and actors and actresses, uh, businessmen, all these leading figures have so much following, so much potential from these corporations as well to shatter the veil and pierce through the veil. And we're not doing that fully yet, but we're well on our way. And um, uh, veilofreality.com, uh, links in the bio, subscribe to uh, Bernard's mailing list. Bernard will be sending out the link for his uh, webinar soon. And what a freaking pleasure. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to mention the webinar you're alluding to. That's it's, it's a long one. It ties deep into more um, esoteric occult topics into what, I call, what the shamans call the topic of all topics, the hyperdimensional matrix control system, in particular occult forces, hidden forces that interfere with us from other realms, entity attachments, right? So the topic is about that webinar is about that in terms of this keys of discernment, protection and clearing. And uh, again, that's probably more quote unquote an advanced webinar for people who may be already aware of it, but you know, anybody can check it out. So more information on once I announce it on my website. Yes. Yeah. Bernard, such a pleasure. Thank you again for coming in onto the show again, talking to us at your Thank beautiful you. home in Topanga Canyon. Um, thanks everyone for tuning in. If you guys had a good time, definitely give us some comments below. We would love to hear your thoughts about this episode. Um, also, don't just consume this content. Go and create with it. Go and write about it. Go make video about it. Go and create things with it. We'd love to see those creations as well. And much love, everyone. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you soon. Peace.